okay. So with the lucky draw stuff out of the way with, uh, we'll move on to the charity auction. Now, why am I making specific notice of the charity auction? Uh, you know, I'm uh, 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 £10, £20, uh, £50, £50. Pound. That, yeah, boring, right? Not this year. This year it was, oh, it was, it was epic. I was there, I was in the thick of things. It wasn't my money, but I was getting the guy to spend it. So, uh, what am I talking about? Well, Simon Plum, the organiser of AA, uh, always gets the uh, artwork for the postcards. Uh, and I think this one was the last one on, which was... Uh, the Grimlock postcard, uh, Andrew Wildman, Greg Berger postcard, and it would be signed by Greg Berger. You know, really cool, really good little thing. Uh, however, uh, Jamie, a uh, good friend as you saw earlier on in the video, um, as I point back in time, of course, um, he he's an MIBS collector, uh, and there really wasn't anything for him, and he was like, should I get it, Andy? And I was like, yeah, dude, buy it! I was like, yeah, all right, all right, I'll, I'll put my hand up, and he stuck his hand up once or twice, and uh, 90, uh, 95, 100, kept going, had a bit of a wall going on the Simon, kept going, uh, 100, 120, 130, it was like, oh, don't want to keep going, Andy, and I was like, yeah, keep going, man, keep going, spend that money, why not, you, you haven't spent it on anything, right, and he was like, oh, okay, keep going, 130, 140, Simon looks like he's going to drop it. He goes for another one! 150! 150 quid! And it's like, Jamie is... No, it was 148 quid. That was Jamie's last bid. And then, out of nowhere, who sticks his hand up at the last possible second? But Mr. David Wallace! And he steals the show. Jamie's like, I can't pay any more than that. And yeah, I was like, dude... I was just messing with you for that entire thing. <laughs> it was great. I wish I had it on video, but I can only describe to you how awesome it was just to be like, dude, you should spend your money. Because most of the show, I was uh, I was looking at Jamie and saying, uh, how much do you think I should spend on this? And Jamie kept on saying, I, I don't know, mate. Uh, knock another tenner off. And I would go, okay, mate, I'll take it if you knock another tenner off. So it was good to, to help him try and spend that money he'd, uh, he'd built up. Uh, through the through the event, so he didn't win. It was good for him, but oh, what a memory! I, I won't forget that. It was so epic. It was just when Dave goes, and it's like, oh, Dave, you bastard, <laughs> you delightful, delightful bastard. Uh, so, like I say, shame I don't have that on video. But what are you gonna do? So after the the <laughs> the awesomeness of the charity event. Uh, we had uh, an interview with Nick Roche, which I will be editing at some point. Uh, so, Nick Roche, really cool guy. We'll leave that for the interview to speak for itself, and I'll talk about uh, Nick later on in the video, whenever that is. Uh, so, from there, uh, we it went on to evening. Yeah, we literally came out the uh, the room that we were filming in, uh, went down in the elevator, and waited outside for the voice acting... Uh, Script reading, that's it. Script reading to begin. Don't have the footage, not allowed to use it because uh, it's going on a DVD which you can buy at some point. Don't know when. Uh, keep tuned to this channel, Dave's channel. Uh, you know, AA stuff and you'll be able to pick up the DVD which will have that stuff on. Plus, uh, Ray, the great mighty Ray singing his awesome song, uh, singing his little heart out. Really good, really enjoyed it. And the, the script reading was awesome by the way. Uh, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Tony, was Optimus Prime? Sorry, mate, I can't remember your, your YouTube name because it's something like NCC number, 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 you know. And he was a really good Optimus Prime, and they'd literally thrown the script in his face at the last second and said, Hey, you're a Prime. And he was like, Whoa, oh, okay. And he had Sammy, was Benair, friggin' great was Benair voice, mate. He was so underappreciated because he only had like eight lines on the max, but my god. Chris McFeely, oh, it's Dinobot, another great one. These two guys, if you squished them into one human ball of goo, they would be an awesome substitute for, like, uh, Scott McNeil. Because they're, both of their voices uh, grasp what the character was, and it was really good to hear them both go. Uh, King Grimlock, sorry, mate, I can't remember your, your true name, but King Grimlock from the Moonbase 2 boards, as a point back in time again, uh, was Razor Beast. 
Uh, I was so happy that he didn't go with a, a I'm Razor Beast kind of voice, because uh, I don't know about Dave, but I was tired of people doing that, and I was like, oh, it's good that he went for something different. St a really good voice. Next to him, oh, this is getting hard now, I think was Simon Williams, but I can't be sure. As the narrator, he was good, he was uh, good. Uh, next to him, Nick Roche as Megatron, Beast Wars Megatron. Holy crap, that guy's awesome as Beast Wars Megatron, what the hell? I totally didn't see that coming, but it, uh, he was awesome. Uh, next to him, I want to say is Ian Corlett uh, as Cheeto, really good as ever, he was Cheeto. So you, you can't fault him for that, he, he was great. And finally there was Greg Berger, uh, who was uh, Grimlock and Outback. Outback who never gets any love. He got a little bit of love here, which was cool. So after that, uh, I went for an Indian with a, a couple of people because, like I said, slice of cake and starving and, you know, I missed out on the band and uh, the pink wig thing, if you want to know what the pink wig thing is, ask Phil, uh, Hot Rod G1 on my subscription list, ask what what's Andy talking about when he says the pink wigs, uh, you'll see and you'll fear. Uh, I missed out next of Kin's band, which was a shame because it they were a really good band. Uh, but what are you gonna do, right? What are you gonna do? Uh, and then at night uh, we went back up to the room after meeting all each other at the stinking greasy burger, uh, burger burger place, greasy burger place, which was literally next door to the Indian, a nice, tasty, delicious Indian that was slightly overpriced. Um, and we went back to, well, some of us uh, had it split off into different sections and groups, uh, but my group, which was Dave, Nicole, uh, Chris, uh, uh, Jeff, uh, or Adam, as Dave called him, G Wolf, Paul, uh, Simon, God, this is getting difficult, Timey, uh, Mark appeared later. Uh, we all went back up to the room. And we started trying to do a podcast. But who should walk through the door but Greg Berger himself? You have to have seen the interview on Dave's channel. You have to have seen it. If you haven't, go and see it. Whichever way the button is that you press to uh, see my subscribers, just click on that. Go on Dave's channel and watch it because it was really good. It was just phenomenal just him being there and talking with us. Like, hey, let's sit down and have a chat. It was like... Be a Greg Burger. Like as soon as he came through the door, I stood up, got out of the chair, and went, "Greg, take my chair, mate. Just take my chair." And he's like, "You sure enough? Take the chair. Take the chair. I don't deserve the chair." Uh, so that was really cool. Really, an awesome way to finish off the day, and it was magical. It was one of those things that's really hard to describe, but when you're there, you can feel it, and it was oh, it was great. And that pretty much ended day one of the convention. Um, we wish we could have stayed there longer at night anyway because uh, it was getting late, we were all getting tired and stuff. So, with that done, uh, we'll move on to day two. Hey guys, and we are back. Uh, now that I've edited the Nick Roche thing, it's obviously a new day and as such a change of clothing. It's necessary to change your clothes. So on with day two. Uh, Unfortunately, guys, I don't have a lot of video footage of day two, apart from right at the end. Dealers tables, that's where we'll start off first. You saw the video uh, from part one, that was the dealers table, and, you know, there was nothing. It was good to get in before uh, everybody else, so I picked up a few little things, uh, which you'll see in my, my haul, because I think most of the stuff I got, I want to say a good portion of the stuff I got was uh, day two. Because uh, it was like, hey, that's a bit cheaper than it was before. Uh, hey, can I have that bit cheaper? Sure, why not? Uh, stuff like that. So, I'll wait that for the, the whole part of the video. But it's getting hazy. Uh, I do remember uh, we all planned, uh, Moomay's two people, we all planned to get Greg Berger a, a gift. Um, and it was like, hey, what should we get him? Because we need to say thank you for being such, you know, like a great guy. So we went and got Masterpiece Grimlock for from Forbidden Planet, but we got a group of people to chip in, so it wasn't just like Dave going, hey, here's, here's my money, take it. Uh, it was like, we, we all went, yeah, he's a little bit, he's a little bit, he's a little bit. And then we all signed it, uh, so we went, uh, me, uh, Jamie, uh, Simon, and Philly, 
Yep, that was up, everybody. Uh, we went in, we, uh, got a little bit lost. We got a little bit lost on the way to Forbidden Planet, I'll be honest, uh, and took many detours around the city, and Philly gave me a tour of the city and was like, ah, that, that used to be a strip club, and I was like, ooh, a strip club, it looks like the, the, the Rainforest Cafe. It had, you know, animals and things on the front, and it shows, I know it's a strip joint, you'd be a bit surprised to go in there. I'd say, yeah, I could have a burger, and they'd probably put some kind of hot stripper lady in front of me with a burger. I mean, it's it's not a bad thing, but they'd probably be charging a hell of an amount for the burger. And probably the stripper as well, but that's not the point. Uh, we got back and uh, all the Moomies 2 people who had chipped in the monies uh, got to sign things, uh, you know, on the sides of the box because we couldn't figure out where to put it, you know, a little message. Uh, so everybody got them down the side saying, thank you, Greg, blah, blah, blah. Unfortunately, my writing being as crap as it is, and um, the pen we were using being as it was, it was just like giant splodges that, that almost looked like words. Uh, so, Greg won't watch this, but if he does, I apologise because my writing's terrible normally and with that pen it was kind of exacerbated. That's right, that's right, Andrew can use big words too. George. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we gave him the gift and uh, apparently he looked like he was going to cry, which is which is kind of nice. That's why the movie Sue is now uh, the forms that made Greg Berger almost cry or, or something like that. I, I can't remember. Uh... What else? I suppose then we... we I, I went to see Ian Collette and get a, a couple of things signed. Uh, me and Nicole spent a bit of time because every so often he looked like he was on his own because for some reason uh, Greg was uh, near the doors to where you'd come in so you'd always see Greg as, as you entered and uh, the table kind of went like towards you. If If I'm coming through the door to the to the event, then the table's coming towards you and Greg Burger's here and everybody else is kind of this way, facing that way and Ian Collette was right at the very end, opposite kind of Greg, if you know what I mean. Um, so he's really far away and as such, he he seemed to be on his own a lot. So me and Nicole went and said, hey, you know, trying to start a bit of banter and whatnot. Uh, so that was quite cool and uh, I was like, hey, uh, did you know that we're doing an uh, interview? Which I will do at one point. I'll put it together and stuff, but it takes a long time. And people have been asking for this. People have been pestering me for this. and it's, it, I was kind of surprised. They'll be disappointed by this part compared to the first part. That's not the point. That's off topic. So, yes, um, I arranged things with Ian. And I was like, Dave, he wants to do it this time. And Dave's like, uh, can we make it this time? And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll tell him if I see him. Uh, and then... We got that time set. Uh, it was just after the quiz. Uh, so the quiz went on. I stayed for the first round of that, I think. I would have a clip of that, but I forgot to ask for it from Dave. So when the second round started, I rushed up to Nicole's room and started cleaning the place up and whatnot. And that, that took me until Ian actually came and we did the interview. That, that went... Uh, it went well until the power went off and I want to say it was Nicole's camera that went dead so you know it's not what I wanted because there were two cameras directly focused on those two like there were before but one of them cuts out halfway through so I need to switch to a, a longer angle so there may be a slight jump or something or it won't look quite right at one point that will be the reason why because I'll have to fix it somehow uh, Oh, a bit of video, yes, the evening chat uh, before everybody goes. Again, apologies if I forget everything that's happened in day two, but the last night where we all got together and we all were like, oh, it's the last time, and we were all sitting in the bar and we, people were drinking away and Jeff started telling me about uh, hentai and the thing called Bible Black, which kind of freaked me out. And uh, we, were, we were gauging each other on how far we could push things, like... Uh, we made Hitler jokes, uh, horrible, horrible racial jokes. Uh, so I'll, I'll put that bit of video on now. It's only very short, but you'll get to see the final, if you like, final look of the, the cast of uh, of Auto Assembly 2009. So let's check it out, because I'm bored of talking.
Hello, Glenn. Uh, Hello. 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 The final evening, the last day. It's a plethora of people. I'm using plethora far too much. Oh, God, yeah. I watched it leaving you there. It was quite interesting. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful rain. golden locks. Oh, I'd snog him in an instant. I do horrible things to him. Horrible. McFeely. This is the most we get, yeah. It's Glenn! He smiles! His legs! <laughs> Look, they're over. real! Glenn's lamps! He exists. He is not Davros. I am not Davros. <laughs> not I'm yet. just a very naughty boy. <laughs> ah, yes. Sad times. Uh, so, we decided, me and Dave decided to... Well, no, Mark offered uh, his room, uh, room to us, so we were like, are you sure? And he was like, totally taken. And we were like, oh, uh, fair news. So we slept uh, over at Mark's, um, and it was good. Uh, because we were able to stay at the hotel longer. In the mornings, we... In the mornings... Ooh, bad English. In the morning, uh, we went downstairs and had breakfast. Uh, again, thanks to Mark for, for paying for that. He's too nice a bloke. Um, and we, ha we we saw Nick Roche, like, in a corner somewhere on his own. And uh, JD uh, went up to him and was talking to him as I went by. And I gave him a kind of a... Salute for the morning because they were in the middle of combat. Didn't want to go. Hi, Nick. Nah. I thought, no, no. They're, they're having a conversation. I'll wait. And then Dave was like, "Bring him over." And he went up to Nick and he said, "Do you, do you want to eat with us?" And uh, he was like, "Oh, can I?" And he he came over and we had a little bit of banter in the morning with uh, with Nick Roche, was which was you know kind of cool. Uh, and then everybody started leaving again, and it was all really depressing. And uh, oh, we had troubles getting to the train. Uh, we missed the first train uh, because of buses, so we had to uh, devise a situation, if you would, to uh, allow us transport onto another train without having to pay an excess fee. So, unbeknownst to me, because I was outside with Philly talking away, saying, "Oh, I wonder what's wonder what's happening," because Mark and Dave have been in there for a while. Those two came along. I forgot to mention. Uh, and uh, apparently I was so socially awkward and had to sit next to my good friend David on the train, otherwise I would become panic-stricken or something like that. I didn't know this, and uh, Mark came out and he said, uh, and he, uh, and he can you look a bit sick and ill and uh, very sociable. And I was like, oh, okay, I, I, I can do that. So I, I just kind of was looking down all the time. Playing with things. I had my little badge on, which Mark said, ha ha ha, that'll help convince them. And I was like, oh, you bastard, Mark. Yeah, but thanks to Mark, because he's got that London attitude of just pushing and pushing until they just give in, which was awesome. Uh, so thank you, Mark, for getting us back home, essentially. Uh, and when we got back, uh, when I got home, what did I do? I jumped on Skype and started talking to the people I just left that day. Sad, but oh, it was good. Uh, so yeah, that was pretty much AA in a nutshell. This was my little documentation uh, of what went on. Uh, just want to have a quick thing. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Nick. You were awesome, guys. I didn't get to meet any of the other guests, unfortunately. Busy, 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 you know. Uh, hope one day to see you again, but who knows? Uh, fate may bring us together in another auto assembly or something like that, which would be good. Uh, everybody at AA was fantastic. Uh, all the guys from Moonbase 2, you know who you are. All the people who are from YouTube uh, that I met, you know who you are. Uh, thank you so much for talking to me and stuff. Uh, yeah, you're far too kind saying my videos are good. Uh, but I appreciate it, so... Um, that's really all I want to say, because I've been talking for a long time now. You know. Uh, I guess all I can do is like show you what I got because I've even got my stuff framed now because it's been a little while from AA. So let's take a look at that and wrap this bad boy up. <coughs> okay, so let's uh, start off with 
poor lighting, apologies, British weather is not the best for this, but uh, I'll show you the uh, first two pictures I got, so turn it around now to the, to the pictures themselves. Okay, now these apparently were toy concept art designs that they'd taken to board meetings and stuff. Well, obviously Beast Machines Megatron there. Uh, and I was just fascinated by the actual artwork because I thought it was really good. Uh, I love the look of the dragon and everything and I thought, dude, I need to have this. So I thought, what the hell, pick it up. And also got it framed and it looks good framed. You can see my reflection there. Woo! As I wiggle around. And the second is the basic tank drone toy, and as you can see, they've used uh, things of the show and altered them, so the spark chip would be there, blah blah blah. Uh, some nice little bits here, and I just again like the way how they'd set it all out. Uh, and again, in a nice frame, so I thought, why the hell not? Uh, bought them for about 60 quid. This one was oh, 30 or something, and... The other one was 50, so I got quite a good deal on them, really. Uh, so I'll take you to the other two things I've got framed now. So uh, Nick Roche was doing uh, artwork all day, and I was one of the last guys to get something done. And he was like, uh, what Transformer do you want to do, uh, me to do? And I was like, well, could you do something of yourself, like a uh, self-portrait? And he was like, you sure? I was like, dude, yeah, you're a good guy. And uh, I was commenting how his hands must be knacking, so uh, that's why his hands are all messed up there and he uh, says to Andy uh, a tired Nick Roche and he was a very tired Nick Roche uh, he said he could have done himself so he, he looked a bit more energetic and I said no no keep it truthful <laughs> and uh, a little laugh about that and the next thing we have uh, which was really awesome was a film animation cell or animation cell of Break the Penguin from Beast Wars Neo uh, just given to me by uh, the guy from Toy Fu who is awesome because of because of this he's yeah, dude thank you again for giving me this I'm, I'm I, I, it's awesome uh, yeah you're an awesome guy <laughs> so with these things framed I do have a couple more things I need to get framed as well but uh, at the time I just wanted to see how these would turn out first so uh, we'll see in time if I get anything else framed which I probably will Okay, so we'll start here because this table is quite messy and I've just quickly cleaned it up. We have the awesome uh, movie six shop thing, uh, which uh, Toya did, which is awesome. I need to get this framed at some point. Uh, the convention comic with uh, signed by Mr. Greg Berger himself. Uh, very cool, and of course, uh, a little Greg there. I assume it was Greg. Uh, it's, it's really cool. Love it. Uh, the man himself, Ian Collette, as Common Rider Black falls over there. Uh, got a picture. This time Dave cannot mock me, I can mock him. Uh, he got Dan Gilverzane last year and I didn't. Uh, and now I have Ian Collett and he doesn't. Ha ha, take that Dave. And he wins this round. Uh, the Greg Berger one, very cool. Uh, like, I got this one because I, I wanted to have all the characters, or a good portion of the ones he'd done. Uh, so I got that. The two uh, postcards uh, done for this year. The uh, artwork time he did, which is awesome. Uh, these are the boring bits. The uh, Bruticus feet, which I got from Kapow Toys, I think. Was it Kapow Toys? I can't remember. No, no. I got these from the internet. I got other pieces for Bruticus uh, from Kapow Toys. So thank you, Kapow Toys, for not these feet, but the other parts to make Bruticus. I won some Revenge of the Fallen top trump cards. Um, I wish I could say I cared more about it, but I don't. Transmetal 2 Black Arachnia. Uh, thank you, George, for the suggestion. Uh, awesome figure. Bit fiddly to transform, uh, but still very cool. Very nice to look at. Then we have, well, we'll go down here. We have Tiger Hawk uh, with his box, which is up there. Another very awesome toy. I was I was getting quite a few Beast Wars this year. Really like uh, Tiger Hawk. Uh, a, a bit fiddly to transform, but once you get the hang of it, he's great. Also got myself, I can never remember if he's the prosecutor or the accusator or, well, he's, he's the guy that says, execute them, and there's a big door falls on his face. Uh, he's pretty awesome. Uh, Air Razor, then we have complete, grot no, yes, grotesque next to him, and repugnance next to him, uh, and complete power master slapdash, apologies for the shaky cam. Uh, I also have the box for... 
Transmetal One Primal, who is up here. Uh, Ultra Magnus, uh, commemorative series, which finally picked up. Uh, his box is there. Uh, then we got Transmetal Two Scavenger, awesome toy. I think another one George kind of recommended. Then we have Transkeeto, of course, one George recommended, who's awesome. And uh, we have Transmetal Two Dinobot, who is a bit crap to be honest, but you know there are worse ones. So I think. If memory serves, that's all I got. But in all honesty, I think what I got was what I wanted. Uh, I could have gone crazy and gone, I want that, 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 uh, but I didn't. Uh, I got the things I wanted, some very nice, unique bits of artwork, uh, which are very cool, and I'm really looking forward to hanging on my walls. Uh, and I'll probably be getting rid of this uh, African picture, because it's, it's not mine. Uh, and I'll probably put the Revenge Re Rewengi of the Fallen, as we like to call it. Uh, giant movie poster there, which was from uh, Evangelus, which he gave to Dave, and Dave said, Oh, there's two. Here, Andy. And I was like, Oh, thanks, Dave. So that might go there. Maybe. Uh, it'll go somewhere, but the rest of them haven't decided yet. Uh, so, yes, thank you guys for, for some reason, sticking with me throughout this massive video bonanza, we'll call it. Um, I'm trying to think oof, what else I can do now. I suppose I need to go and edit this all together, and I think it may kill me. So, if I survive that, then I will see you for another video review on something. Maybe it's going to be Animated Rekka, which Nicole gave me at AA. Technically not part of the AA, AA, uh, AA haul, because I didn't buy it at AA. It was given to me by uh, Nicole, but that's getting a special review. Uh, so, I think that's everything. <laughs> this is Cobra Commander saying thanks for watching, guys, and um, who knows what's going to happen in the future. Let's go 2010! Rah! It's the last time I do another difficult review.